and welcome to For the Love of Nature, a podcast where we tell you everything you need to know about nature and probably more than you wanted to know. I'm Laura. And I'm Katie. And today we're going to be talking about another episode of cryptozoology. Yeah, yeah. You know, those animals that some claim are real, others claim are not. Jury's still out on some things. I mean, listen, once again, I know I keep bringing this up, but... Over COVID, the U.S. government announced that UFOs are real. <laughs> I did no, mine. Like, I'm never letting anyone forget that. I'm never going to because I still, to this day, will bring that up. And there's always somebody in the room that'll go, what? I'm like, here we go. Lesson le-. And the people who are like really close, like work colleagues and stuff, who have heard my spiel every single time, they just laugh because they know what's coming. But if the government admits that there's UFOs that cannot be of like any known human technology yeah something's got to be flying it and then the other one i did was bigfoot hide and go seek champion yeah your bigfoot story is the last time we're giving me the heebie-jeebies i still think about it every once in a while and it just gives me the shivers there are some really creepy and the one was like leaning against a tree watching her yes no move that very day (laughs) yeah i would too because you could feel like yeah you just feel like you're being watched then you look up because that's always Anytime you're outside, you know what I mean? Like, that's always your back of the mind fear. Well, and I, right, for sure the back of the mind fear, but like the, you know, the woods is like my happy place. It would no longer be my happy place. No, no. If I thought somebody was out there, freaking terrified. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be done. I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. All right. So Um, before we jump into that, did you have nature news? Yeah. I was just going to bring up something real quick. This article is titled Good News Found After Analysis of Wolf Discovered in New York. So this was, this is just published, but a wolf was killed in December of 2021 in Cherry Valley, which is a was in Ostego County, New York. And although that was a while ago, for over a year, they thought it was a coyote that had been killed, but I guess they were doing some DNA stuff with it. And so it's actually given some insight into, you know, potential wolf populations in New York State. And doing some different, like, DNA stuff, they can actually tell what an animal was eating prior, which is just, you know, pretty crazy cool. Yeah. So they don't... What, from what they could find, the wolf had not been feeding on any, like, domesticated livestock, which is good news. So, like, yeah, very even good if they news. are moving into the state, not to worry. Yeah. Uh, and that it had never been domesticated at any point in its life because it hadn't ever eaten that kind of stuff. So it was a truly wild wolf. It's crazy. Yeah. So there are a lot of areas in the United States now where wolves are actually starting to move south. They're expanding their territories, they're adapting more, and they're interbreeding with coyotes. So, you know, koi wolves is a term that more and more people are hearing about. So we don't have to be afraid of large predators. Mm -hmm. We just have to be aware if they're around. But yeah, kind of a cool thing that, you know, wow, what if wolves really come back to New York State and then that's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Pennsylvania. Yeah, no, it really is. That's kind of like the talk down here is still there have been more and more because jaguars in Texas used to be native yeah. here not so much anymore but there's still always folks that are gonna say oh hey i've spotted that huh <laughs> get it um <laughs> so that you know they're they it's the big cats so we have we have ocelots yeah ocelots here which are spotted yeah which are spotted <laughs> no so freaking so freaking small and then there are the Jagarundis, Jagarundis yeah. that are, that I don't... But they don't look anything. They almost look more like uh-uh. an otter. Like, kind like of. Like a cat otter. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not the same. I don't even know how to... They're a cat. They're a cat, cat otter. otter. They, yeah, like, a cat they otter, I guess. Like, Just a weird creature. But yeah, so there are, there's always, like, reports of people saying that there's jaguars. I don't think... But that's like in Pennsylvania too, constantly. I can't tell you the amount of people that have told me that they have seen, heard, or know someone that has seen or heard a mountain lion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I've told this story before about the one time I was running in western Pennsylvania, like on our property, and I found a bobcat. Yeah, Yeah, that I was running around and I was just running laps because I used to play soccer. And so I was running, we had seven acres, and so I was running around the yard. You know, when I say yard, you know, it's seven acres, so a <laughs> little bit, a little bit bigger. And one of our smallest dog, who was just a sass pot and a half, Daisy, 
she was barking at something in the weeds and I figured it was a neighbor's cat or whatever. And so it was her and then our black lab at the time. And they were just barking, barking, barking. And I went over, pulled him back, pulled the like the high grass apart. And it was just a bobcat sitting there hiss <laughs> and just panting. Scared the bejeebers. Oh, yeah, it was clearly terrified, but scared yeah. the bejeebers out of me. Oh, I'm sure. I ran back so fast. I mean, thankfully, Daisy's 26 pounds. And so, you know, so she was tiny. So I could just swoop her up and run run with her over my shoulder kind of yeah. thing. The black lab, he was a good protective dog, but still a black lab. So he's just like, okay, I'm coming Derby. with, yeah, yeah, I'm coming with you too kind of thing. But yeah, so bobcats I would see a lot, but... Yeah, jaguars down here, that would be kind of crazy. I think the last time one was officially spotted in Texas, I want to say it was like the 40s or 50s, like the last official, official one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountain lions, I wouldn't, I know there are. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if you had mountain lions. Yeah, no, we definitely, yeah, definitely have mountain lions. And there's in a Central America and Mexico mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, and like down by uh, Big Bend National Park and everything. I mean, there's just nothing. Yeah. out there in that habitat just crazy crazy all righty so do you want to talk about i mean things some that cryptids yeah some things that also have reports but may or may not yeah be really there yeah let me my two let me think here you got a good segue otherwise i'll go no, you can. You can. Both of mine, one I've never heard of before, which I always love coming across stuff I've I never too. heard of. I have one that I know well and one that I've never heard of. Yeah. The one I've never heard of. And then the one I have heard of, but I didn't realize the origins of where it came from. I'll oh, leave it cool. at that. Yeah. Yeah. But you um, can go ahead and go first if you want. Well, I was going to say, because we were just talking about Bigfoot, I would like to talk about the Chichinya. Ooh. Which is very similar. Uh, and I had never heard of it before, but I was like, oh, what's this? And then looked more into it and was like, ooh. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty much the Siberian version of Bigfoot with some key differences. So it is described as human-like with broad shoulders, a large protruding brow, long matted hair, no neck, and occasionally bearing unusually co- colored body hair or fur. Um, I always had well, to describe them like so ugly you know what i mean yeah poor, right poor bigfoot like, mm. but the big difference between them and bigfoot is that they are often reported as wearing animal skins making them more human than bigfoot so like they wear yeah. like, reindeer hides um, and bigfoot never wears clothes um, <laughs> just which, out there free balling we're in siberia so like yeah can't blame them. It's cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're also called mulin, meaning bandits, because uh, they have been known to, or it's been said that they do midnight raids on barns and dwellings. I mean, if there's going to be anything that would live someplace that we would have no clue, it would be Siberia. Siberia. Yeah. yeah, yeah just yeah. a vast land of nothing. Mm, yeah. And uh, another difference between it and Bigfoot, although I didn't find much information about this. Just in passing, just as a little sprinkle of that. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes how, how do you as, how do you spell it? Flesh. Ew. Uh, <laughs> that's us. <laughs> so possibly uh, it's spelled different ways. So the okay. you can do C H U C H U N A A or Y A or the Mullen, which is M U L E N, still the same thing. So. Yeah, it just looks like the drawing depictions just look like almost like a huge Neanderthal. Right, exactly. Yes. So, but the one picture that I saw was just totally a Neanderthal, but this one they are saying is covered in hair. So it's like a hairy, really hairy, big, giant person. Usually it's described as like seven feet tall. Okay. Um, yeah. The reports are coming from rural, rural, boy, that's a hard word, rural <laughs> Siberia, which is such a funny concept. Yeah, because isn't it's all of Siberia? Siberia? So like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Listeners, if anyone's from Siberia, I'm sorry, but I picture it as there just being nothing there. Most accounts are coming from the Northeast, although there is the occasional Southeast one, and they are possibly living in the mountains or on the tundra in that area. Typically, the reports are coming from native Siberians, such as the, and guys, I'm sorry again, it's probably the Yakuts or the Tungus peoples, sometimes other rural people, but those are the main ones, is the native peoples that are reporting this. And these reports are hundreds of years old, with Hmm. Native people's stories going back even longer, like possibly thousands of years. So let's get into some of these reports. These reports were taken 
seriously. I mean, like I said, there's been it's been going on for hundreds of years, but things really started being taken seriously in 1928 when the Soviet Union sent out search parties because they oh, were like, geez. all right, like, let's go. Let's find get it. this. Yeah. Yeah. There was actually a formal report made on the Chichunya that was presented to the Commission for the Discovery and Study of Antiquarian Curiosities uh, hmm. attached to the Western Siberian section of the Russian Geographical Society. So lots of stuff there, but <laughs> there was an official report made. And the report recommended that detailed investigations and systematic studies occur before the Chichunya became extinct. So huh. they believed it was there. It just, like, something had to be done. It was going to go away. And so in 1933, there was a professor that called upon the government to abolish the hunting of these people on the grounds that all people of the USSR deserved equal protection, but little was done about it. Um, hmm. So apparently they were being hunted if they were there. Yeah. Um, various scientists. Yeah, because then, cause then, like, all right, so then you have to ask the question, like, how far did this go? Okay, let's just say if it was a myth. Were there that many people willing to be like, yeah, I hunted one and I got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So there was, a, there's been a number of scientists who've been like, yep. So in 1970s, one of the geologists, so these surveys actually went on for a long time through the geographical society. Like they were doing other things, but I guess while they're out there, they were yeah. also seeing it. <laughs> I mean, while um, we're out here, let's just log this, yeah. you know, big creature. So in 1970s, a geologist out there was hearing lots of local tales but concluded that the chichunya must be dying out like if it was probably gone by 1970 but in 1985 there was a british anth british anthropologist who claimed to have seen one with her own eyes that in particular chichunya was dubbed micheni aka the marked one because he had a white patch on his forearm and so that's what the locals called him Hmm. And she said she saw him. A newspaper reported on a story that in 1957, hunters killed a chichunya and brought back its body, but that body disappeared when they brought it back to town. Of course um, it did. Yeah. In 2001 and 2002, reports of strange ape-like creatures were found in traps. One was the size of a large dog, covered in hair except for face and feet, and had a tail. And then there are several versions about what happened to that body. Again, gone, but for many different reasons, possibly. Also, only the size of a large dog, then, then it must have been a kid. Like, yeah, because, right? Yeah. Ooh, and then the other actually had golden colored fur, and that guy found it in the wilderness and left it there. We'll be back after a quick break. Did you see the Colombian government is spending almost $4 million to relocate Pablo Escobar's hippos? In Brazil, a school of piranha attacked and injured at least eight people at a beach resort. First fatal mountain lion attack in 20 years in California. Hey, it's me, Forrest Galante, wildlife biologist. You may have seen me on Joe Rogan's podcast or my various TV shows like Extinct or Alive or Shark Week. So join me and my friends as we break down animal news from around the world and discuss all things wildlife. Click here to unlock these animal mysteries. Which, I mean, they say, I mean, just like any animal, there's, you know, color variations. But I know with Bigfoot, yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of color variations. So, yeah. Well, right. And I guess if, if it was very humanoid, it could have different colored hair just mm -hmm. like we do. Yeah. There were tales of a strange being wandering the remote forest of Tunguska near the Scenes of devastation. Okay, so I was like, what does that mean? Scenes of devastation, what does that mean? Katie, I've never heard about this. No. But, so the Tunguska blast happened in 19 to 1908 when a 12 megaton explosion, okay, just, that's giant. Yeah. 12 megaton explosion flattened 830 square miles of forest, possibly killing three people. And scientists Maybe. <laughs> Right, but the, well, I guess but the, who knows who was living out there. Exactly, like, they don't um, even know. that, And also that in 830 square miles, there might have yeah. only been three people. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but if you look at these pictures, it looks like an atomic bomb went off there. And so sci what scientists think happened, though, this was in 1908, was likely an atmospheric explosion when a 160 to 200 foot asteroid entered Earth's atmosphere and exploded in the atmosphere. So huh. there's no impact crater, but it is the what? only asteroid that we know of in human life, like in our lifetime. Like, 
in, I think I have heard in, about this. Yeah, because of that. Like, there, that's the only thing I... This is the only time this is that hu- while humans have been around. Yeah, I think that's history, the, I think that's the only notice. thing that I know. Like, that triggers something. That also, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's it. Thankfully, if an asteroid was going to hit the planet, that it decided to hit Siberia. Siberia. Not, like, <laughs> India or, yeah. you know. Yeah, good No impact crater. So, Weird. it's a weird place. Okay. Yeah. So back to the Chichenya. So there are tales of a strange being who wanders that devastated area. The nomadic reindeer herdsmen of Siberia have reported sighting a gi- gigantic gray humanoid figure about 50 miles north of that river. They saw a man who seemed to be over eight feet in height, picking berries and drinking water from a stream. And He's just living his good life out there. Like, just yeah. leave him alone. <laughs> just um, minding his business. Mong- Mongol herdsmen have also reported seeing them, and others who have so- supposedly investigated one of man's greatest mysteries, the Tunguska Blast, have also claimed to have seen the Chichunya. So is there a connection? The world may never know. Yeah. So where is this coming from? Actually, unlike some of the other ones, you know, I did the Chupacabra last time, and there was some very yeah. clear cut, like, where is this coming from? Yes. Mangy animals. <laughs> May- there- mangy animals. <laughs> There really is no clear cut what this could be. Well, because Possibly. I mean, it, it's so isolated. I'm, okay, listen. Well, just it's based, I mean, stories of humanoid, hairy humanoid creatures are literally reported all over the world. There, there are, there we've are. Got Bigfoot. Yes. There's a Yeti. We've got this. So, so Chichunya. But, <laughs> could it be really? big hairy dudes or could it have just been some guy out there wearing like a giant fur exactly coat? that's what i was gonna say it's it, it's so isolated it, it literally could be like a man with giganticism you know what i mean yeah. it's just like yeah. it's hereditary they just keep to themselves they see people every once in a while and they just decided yeah. to stay away you know what i mean the, who knows the only other thing that some people have put forth and i'm like mm, maybe maybe they were possibly a remnant Paleo-Asiatic people, or some people say Neanderthals, although Neanderthals b- were believed to have went extinct 40,000 years ago and yeah. only ever reached heights of five and a half feet. Yeah, this but is significantly a, taller. But a Paleo-Asiatic people, like just some other, like- Some other thing, yeah. Super primitive, not, we're not talking missing link here, but like some it's other a different branch. primitive yeah. humanoid- Maybe, because remember, we've talked about this in the podcast before, there were woolly mammoths still living in the Arctic Mm -hmm. Circle until 1650 BC, which is not actually that long. That long. No, it's not that long ago at all. So if they, if the woolly man, and and where their people are seeing this, we are within, in Siberia, is part of it is in the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Where they're finding and seeing these people. Yeah. This is where they're finding, like, woolly mammoth carcasses and yeah. uh, woolly rhino carcasses and things. Yeah. So maybe a primitive people could survive that long? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's so... Probably, it's, if they were... It's so isolated. It's true that they probably did die out yeah. in, in this century because, let's be real, people would have hunted them if they yes. were like, this is... Terrifying. Yeah, terrifying. Yeah. And, you know, everybody talks about that's where may or may not people have been crossing the Bering Strait and where all of our ancestors have come from. So maybe a primitive people? I don't know. Hmm. Hopefully they're not actually eating flesh of people. Jeez. Again, definitely you're asking to be hunted to extinction in that case. I was going to say, it it just goes back to the fear. Like, humans are very much so fear-induced. Like, just, if it's scary, kill it. Yeah. When, Yeah. When it comes to anything, like, of mystery and so but, yeah yeah the, the anthropologist saying that she saw the one that they named is interesting yeah because and, and you would, if it wasn't chichunya was it just a person with giganticism who was hairy and they just kept that person or they or they are like primitive poor pe- you know peoples of the land they don't have normal clothing yeah. they do they are hunting whatever's out there yeah you know what I mean? And, like, and more so, more so than the Aboriginal people who live there right now. Like the yes. people who are reporting them are considered natives. Yeah, but like we're talking like right primitive, 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 possibly not even like language speaking. Yes, yeah, yeah. Again, like if it were to happen, it would be in Siberia because there's yeah, nothing. they're in some deep jungle somewhere. Yeah, yeah. dang, crazy. Yeah. 
Alrighty. Well, the first one that I'm going to do is this one I have never heard of, and it's the Black Shuck. No. No, I hadn't heard of it either. S-H-U-C-K? Yep. Like, okay. Yep. Like shucking corn. Yep, that's what I was just going to say. I was like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to show my Western Pennsylvania too much, but like shucking corn. Um, <laughs> so the Black Shuck is a ghostly black dog that is said to roam the coastline and countryside of East Angula, England. The bla- Okay, the- I this is ringing a bell yeah. from stories that I've read, but I don't know if I did, knew it was called the Black Shuck. I, no clue, no clue. So the origins and the legends are, again, kind of unclear because kind of like the Chupacabra, it's, they think it's a, a, like a black gangly dog. So there's tons of reasons of what it could be, but... Right. Where it came so from. what's making it not a normal dog? Yeah. Well, so it does date back centuries and is well known, well, very well known British folklore. The origins of the legend are unclear, but it is believed to have been passed through oral tradition. So again, just one story after another. Some believe that the name Shuck may have been derived from the old English word Sukya, which means demon or devil. So Ooh, That's intense. Yeah. So black, black devil. The location of where the legend come from is primarily the coastal regions of East Angula, which includes the countries of Norfolk and Suffolk. Suffolk. The area has a long history of folklore and superstition with tales of witches, ghosts, and other supernatural creatures dating back centuries. So this is already an area that does talk about legends and folklore and all kinds of stuff anyway. So it's just like, let's just add another one. To, to the mix here. Yeah. So there are various versions of the Bakshuk legend, but most of them describe a large black dog that appears on dark stormy nights, often accompanied by thunder and lightning. The dog is... And this, sorry, Go this ahead. is on which side of Britain? Uh, you said it was the east... No, wait. It just coastal regions of East Angula. Okay. And okay. Clo- okay. includes the counties of Norfolk and Suffolk. No, Norfolk and stuff. Got it. Thank yeah. You. Keep going. Yep. So let's see here. So yeah, so it appears on stormy nights accompanied by thunder and lightning. The dog is said to have glowing red eyes and be the size of a calf or even larger. Some versions of the story describe the black shuck as a harbinger of death or a symbol of impending doom. Yikes. This is, for all you Harry Potter fans out there, this is the Grim. It's a dog. It's like a black dog that, that says you're going to die. Oh, I'm not... A Harry yeah. Potter but that's nerd. definitely where this is cut. Like, that. Gotcha. That her, came from? Her version of it. Yeah. I mean, if it's well-known British folklore, it would make sense. Definitely. So, yeah. So, it's a symbol of death or impending doom. Others suggest that the creature is a protector watching over the people of that area and warding off evil spirits. So, you have some people that are like, nope, this is all bad. You have other, and then others that yeah. are like, nope, it's protecting Literally us. opposite, yes. opposite translations. Yeah. Or interpretations, I should say. So as far as sightings go, there have been several firsthand accounts of seeing the creature. One of the most famous sightings occurred in 1577 in the town of Blyth, Blythburg in Suffolk. According to the account, a large black dog burst into the church during a thunderstorm and killed two people before just disappearing. Dang. Like, so clearly it's not like a normal dog if it's just gonna bust into a church yeah. of all places. At the very least a rabid dog. Yeah, but it bust into a church during a storm well, and right, just, you definitely be thinking demon. You're like yeah. this is yeah. this is Satan. Yeah. Another notable sighting occurred in nineteen oh one when a man walking home from a pub claimed to have been chased by a large black dog with glowing eyes. Which again, let's just pause. A man walking alone home from a pub and he said that well, he saw and, a large black said, dog with glowing eyes from a bar. And also glowing eyes like as many of us animal people know many animals experience the red eye effect yes. or eye shine when light is shined into their eyes they glow. But so also he saw if well, the light was coming you know what I mean. But the sobriety of the man is also questionable. Yeah, I'm not yeah. judging even him. Was, even if he was still cold sober. <laughs> Yeah, it he could, could have still, still seen glowing eyes. And in 1901, oh, be- yeah, and in 1901, he's not going to necessarily know that. Other accounts describe encounters with black shuck on deserted roads or in isolated fields. Dude, I would literally poop my pants 
right? This is okay. This this right here, this is little Lara's nightmare, okay? Because my growing up, my greatest fear was of black wolves for many reasons. Interesting. It started with Beauty and the Beast, and then the next thing or if not Beauty and the Beast, then definitely the never ending story. Because I'm terrified fair. of Sonic Wolf. Yes. Then there was there was a movie called Benji about a little Oh dog yeah. At, and there's a black uh-huh. wolf that tried to eat him. So little R was like, black wolves are horrible. So for the next, like, I don't know, eight to ten years, I would see that wolf in my basement, in the hallway at night, I'm terrified. So, like, <laughs> me, grown-up Lara, just having an experience with some, like, coal black dog on a back road. I would, first of all, never be on a back road alone by myself. <laughs> but... Yeah. I would just just be die done here. Like I would be dead. It would have pretended my death because I would have died of a heart attack. Yeah, right. Well, besides you, there were numerous sightings and reports over the centuries. Again, there's no concrete evidence that the black shuck exists. Skeptics argue that sightings are simply the result of people's imaginations or the exaggeration of natural phenomena such as large dogs. You know, and then, like, the thunderstorm. Yeah, if you see a German shepherd at night, it'd be freaking terrifying. Yes, or, like... A lot of them can be black. Or, like, an Irish wolfhound, and who are huge. Yes. Yeah. So, however, those who believe the legend of the Black Shuck, they they do have some basis in rea- in reality here. So some historians have suggested that the legend may have been based on the presence from the presence of large black dogs owned by Vikings who settled in the area centuries ago. So they brought over like big, large, like protecting dogs yeah. that were black. And then they just either got away, whatever had, you know, feral dogs, whatever. Others have ju- suggested that the legend may have been inspired by ancient Celtic legends of spectral dogs that roamed the countryside. So again, just more legends. Yeah, this is very similar. And it reminds me of what's the, there's a Sherlock Holmes, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Oh, yeah. 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 Like, it's very much like that, too. So, in addition to these tales of sightings, the legend of Black Shuck has also inspired numerous works of art and literature over the years. The creature has appeared in everything from local folk songs to modern horror movies. In recent years, there's been renowned interest, like, re- sorry, renowned, renewed interest in the legends with various groups organizing Black Shuck themed events and tours in the area. So, so, they're kind of like in- embracing it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in conclusion, the Black Shuck is the well-known legend in the British folklore and has been passed down from centuries to centuries. And whether or not it's, I mean, obviously some people are going to embrace it. Others are still going to be terrified of it. But see, but there's still rant. There's not as many sightings as what's as what there once was. Yeah. So again, they were saying like that was more backing to the basis of the whole vikings brought over huge dogs yeah that they've died out so because they're like yeah we're just not seeing them all that much anymore so or i was just looking up you know i mean this is this in particular animal this is classic like deep subconscious human fear oh it is a predator in the night yeah something creepy yeah and although wolves so the last wolf in england was killed in the 14th century okay so that was a long time ago and that's a freaking island but you're also on an island like it's a large island but still you're on an island yeah they kill out they killed the last wolf there but where they killed the last wolf was in the county south of suffolk okay okay so the last place in england they saw wolves was that side that okay that that kind of area yeah so if like this could also have been local people's telling True. Their kids like don't go out at night. Yes, literally, there's a wolf out there who will eat you. That has transformed into this dog, or yeah. people saw remnants of the last of the wolves. Yep, and then no, very well. Yeah, crazy, but yeah, that was one I'd never heard of before. Yeah, I'd never. I don't think I knew that's the name. Yep, I heard Black of like that the legend kind of thing, but not the name. Well, now you know. Um, the more you know. Right. Well, something I've heard a lot about, but still had a lot of interest. I, so I've never do- dove super into the legend. So this was a fun exercise. I just know a lot about it. General stuff. And it's the Mothman. This is a or good Mothman. one. Yeah, this is a good one. This is one that is close enough to where I grew up that it, yeah. once you once we were old enough to hear about this, you're like, never going there ever. Right. Because it's like, I, again, this is, and There's I know lots we, of layers to this, too. There, there, there are so many freaking layers. Again, this is the same 
I hold the principle with this one as I do with ghosts and like Ouija boards and everything like that. Whether or not I believe in it or not, don't care. I, side of I am not messing with it. Like, just no. Like, whenever people, like, you know, teenager growing up. I feel about Ouija boards. Yeah, I'm why? Not just sure, I'm not sure I believe in them or not. I'm just not. I'm just I not. will never just No, these. no. And this is the same thing with going to this town and, ever, like, no. No, <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> well, Let's dive in. Okay, so this is actually a relatively recent cryptid it as is. far as cryptids go because this all started in the 1960s. So Point Pleasant, West Virginia, mm. um, in between PA and Ohio, um, it, the, the sightings started to happen. So first let me describe what people were seeing and then we'll talk about the sightings themselves. So Mothman is described as a six to seven foot tall creature, humanoid in shape, giant bright red eyes, a 10-foot wingspan, and basically described as like a man, but with wings. Yep. Which is really creepy. Mm -hmm. Uh, Really creepy because the Mothman makes you think a giant moth. No. Kind of. But like, this is just a dude with wings. Yes. um, Which is really creepy. And it's also described as being a clumsy runner, but a good flyer. (laughs) I mean, to be um, fair, if it was real, seen it do both. Yeah, yeah, but to be fair, if it has adapted to flying, it doesn't really right. need to run well, right? But I guess makes it then more adapted to aerial life than so. So yes, humanoid, but not human because humans are good runners. So on November twelfth, nineteen sixty six, I'm already first- getting ge- like heebie jeebies. <laughs> but continue. <laughs> I'm just gonna well because there's uh, just so much information too. I had to there's a lot. Website. There is so much on the Mothman. So grave diggers. Also, like, I love that this is starting Dude, off with grave, grave diggers. diggers. Yeah, grave diggers looked up to see a brown human being soaring from tree to tree above them. F no. Which again, I would die of a heart attack if I yes. saw. Yes, you're a grave digger. First of all, you're already like yeah. you're already like freaked out. Senses are on high alert, and yeah, then and then you see some giant humanoid creature soaring from tree to tree. I would nope. I would put down my shovel. And I would just calmly walk away and be like, this is my re- resignation. I'm, out. I'm done. Three days later, this is the big one. This is where it all started in the news. Because those guys didn't report anything, Mm-mm. I guess, until later. Yeah. So on November 15th of 1966, four people were driving on Route 62 near the National Guard Armory Building and a power and the power. This area, I dug much more into it. It's called the TNT area. So, back in World War II, this area was a munitions, like, depot. Like, they made Mm -hmm. munitions for World War II. So, they made TNT and they made some other things there. And so, there's all these underground bunkers that are kind of being reclaimed by nature. And, like, the whole place is being reclaimed by nature. But that there is talk that either there are still things stored there or, at the very least, that a lot of these materials are toxic and seeping back into the land. So it's already, like, a creepy place. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Old World War II munitions bunkers. Yeah, <laughs> right. So that's where they're driving by. And Linda Scarberry, one of the women who was in the car, described seeing a slender, muscular man about seven feet tall with white wings which that the whole colors are always changing with mom. Yes. Yeah. But tall with white wings. And then said she was unable to discern its face due to the hypnotic effect of its eyes. Distressed, the witnesses drove away at speed and said that the creature flew after their car, making a Mm. screeching sound. It pursued them as far as Point Pleasant city limits. And they were going a hundred miles per hour because they were terrified. Yeah. And they said it was keeping up with them. So they were saying it was flying like a hundred miles per hour. There were eight more sightings over the next several days. Two were volunteer firefighters who saw a bird with large red eyes, like a giant bird with large red eyes. Another guy in a nearby town saw weird patterns on his TV and heard noises outside. When he went out with a flashlight, he saw two large red eyes that resembled bicycle reflectors, and his German shepherd ran into the woods after them, and his dog was never seen. He never found his dog again. He just found Paul Prince going around in his circles and then gone. Then nothing. No, yes. no Paul Prince leading away or there. Just gone dog. Mm-mm. Nope. Um, just that's nope. also when I would move. Yeah. Just um, nope. <laughs> nope. That, that, uh, then 
It's it's you're so. you're in the border of West Virginia and Ohio. There's about a hundred thousand other places I would rather move, <laughs> you know, move to. I'd be okay leaving. So then, and then just more and more sightings. So there was like this frenzy of sightings in 1966. Then in 1967, so almost, uh, it's actually a year to the day. Yep. Okay. That these first people, not the grave diggers, but the newspaper people saw November 15th. On December 15th, 1967, the Silver Bridge collapsed in Point Pleasant. This bridge was built back in 1928 for much lighter cars. The cars at the time were about 1,500 pounds, and then the average weight of a car in the 60s was five or 4,000 pounds. So, like, way heavier as heavy yeah. as what that bridge was built for. And traffic was really heavy on the bridge that day. And because that bridge was built for lighter cars, they had built no redundancy into that bridge. And redundancy is, like, a fail-safe. So, yep. let's say now when you build bridges... If one part cracks, the entire bridge doesn't collapse because they've built in extra stops. But at the time, they didn't do that. So one piece snapped on the Ohio side of the bridge and the entire bridge fell apart within moments, plunging all of the cars and people into the ice cold Mm -mm. river. Yeah. 46 people were drowned or were crushed by the bridge. So many. Yeah. 46 people. That's just, yeah, it's so sad. And so. Also one of my biggest fears. Yeah, oh my god. In gosh, a car. For sure. I actually Definitely. have I have I've had nightmares about that. Well, I have one of those car window breaker thingies that are like in my car's like door that I actually have velcro to the, like the inside of the door. You know what I mean? That like it, it's yeah. like a little hammer. It's yeah, it's like a yeah. Because yeah, that's definitely a huge fear of mine. Mm-hmm. Um some people believe so uh, some now where does this connect with Mothman? Some people believe that the Mothman was either responsible for this or was the harbinger of doom, very much like the Black Shuck. Because wasn't it, he spotted near he near was, the so yeah? Was, I mean, depending on who you say yeah, who says it's just so a lot of people were like, listen, this happened a year to the day, and all of a sudden sightings. St- most sightings of Mothman stopped after that day. Yeah. So it was like that was, was like there, the f- the final capstone. And then he was gone. Cuz cuz yeah. I read I read a lot of reports that said that like they saw him like nearby then after that big mass death gone. Just yeah. like nothing. Yeah. And so in 1975 a nonfiction, in air quotes, because I think this very much depends on who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> the nonfiction book Mothman Prophecies came out. And so the author of that connected the dots between Mothman and what happened on that bridge. Yep. And then he also talked about how there's lots of other weird things about what could have been going on, that people in the area were having, um, like, uh, precognition, like they were, people were seeing what was going to happen ahead of time, all this stuff. In 1999, there were actually sightings in Moscow of a similar creature, and later that year there were apartment building bombings mm. um so those people connected the dots there saying again look what's happened this thing shows up and then a bunch of people die and then in 2016 in point pleasant a man saw a large creature jumping from tree to tree and he snapped pictures and you guys can see the pictures online yep. they are pretty freaky but yep. most people think it's just an owl carrying a snake but he's like no freaking way that's not what i saw and then in 2019 there was actually like so so during there was Hundreds of reports made yeah. during that year in Point Pleasant. There was like 50-something people in total who said that they saw him in Chicago in 2019. So he's still around, possibly, just in different places. Is it the same creature? Is it different creatures? Are there more of them? And if you want to know more, there is a Mothman Museum with all the police reports and witness accounts located in Point Pleasant. And they have a Mothman Festival every year. It's very much a culture and part of the town, and it's great for them for tourism and things like that. And it really hit the national stage in 2002 when they made yep. a film out of it, which is what I saw as a kid. I was yeah, 12, Mothman 12, Prophecies, yeah. 12, and I was like, this is it. It was with Richard Gere, and it was terrifying. Yeah, it is um, creepy. Even though you only see the monster once, yep. it's more about the... <laughs> it's the it's idea of it. mind, yeah, yeah. It's like a whole mind blow thing. So what's actually going on? Okay, I'm going to start with... Do you want me to start most likely or least likely? Oh, go ahead. I don't, uh, do least likely first. Okay, least likely. Okay. Um, 
military experiment. If it was in the area of this munitions factory, what was else it? Did they yeah, do there? was it really a you know an ammunition right. factory or not? So military experiment gone wrong. Of course, we're going aliens, okay? Because the guy in the Mothman prophecies ties this to, you know, that guy up with saw weird patterns on his TV happening. There were visits from men in black at the time to this town. Of course there were. these sightings. <laughs> so, like, was it, was it because they knew it was something? Was it not because they knew it was something? It would explain all the precognitions that people had. It would explain the weird, like, it would explain a lot if yeah. it was an alien. <laughs> um, Let's just take it as an alien, because that'll help. Yeah, a barred owl. Some people are like, mm, it's just an owl, because that would explain the red eyes, like, the because of the eye shine. True. I don't know, man. That's a big stretch. Yeah. You'd have to be really wasted to think a barred, a barred owl, owl. foot wingspan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I know pe- people exaggerate, but that's a, that's a that's bit a much. One. Also, most people in the area are probably familiar with barred owls. Yeah, uh, or, or at least just owls in general, you know? Yeah. It very much resembles what they consider a demon archetype that people see during sleep paralysis. A lot of people describe a very similar creature that they see yeah. during sleep paralysis, which means that that image is somewhere in the human subconscious. Well, I and think, so- I, again, though, I think that that is, it's a fear of the unknown, something that is human-like enough because we know humans, like nothing is scarier than a human because we're evil. Like yeah. we can be evil. And We've so- bad things. Yes. And we know it, yeah. And nocturnal, night. Yes, yeah. Always scary. Yeah. Red eyes, like all of that. And so is this just an unconscious fear that people, so when people panic, is this just an image that they're projecting when they're seeing animals, random animal encounters that this is- Yeah. Like, this is what I'm seeing. There was definitely a guy at the time, whether or not it was the first time, there was a report of a local man that hid in a Halloween costume and he was hiding in those bunkers. Do you want to die? Like, right? (laughs) Um, because okay, for, is, pause, pause, pause. It is West Virginia. I'm sorry. I know I, I live in Texas, the exact same thing. but I again, having grown you up on the border, yes, gosh, because that's definitely what like when this was going down, people were arming themselves with guns. They yeah, I would too. Away. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that guy was hiding in the bunkers, and so maybe that was the first sighting, and then people panicked and saw it everywhere. Yeah, who knows. But, okay, the, I think, in my opinion, most plausible, if we're going not supernatural or anything at all, Mm -hmm. because, dude, like, it definitely, yeah, like, even if it was, like, the angel of death, you Mm -hmm. know, like, whatever, but actually explainable, Sandhill Crane, which I've never heard this, but I'm like, oh, okay, so a WVU professor of biology thinks that it could have been a Sandhill Crane. These birds are about as tall. For, first of all, this poor Sandhill crane. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like before the he's bridge. And he has no idea. Error. He just, but, Error. and he's just like on, like a little lost, just like mosey in his way. And he's just like lands on this bridge because he's like, this is a safe place. Next thing you know, the whole thing collapses. He kills 46 people. And he's like, oh yeah. my goodness. It was the bird that broke the bridge. The and, bird that broke the bridge. <laughs> and he's just like minding his own business. He's just like, trying to figure out how to get back and just causing chaos i wasn't even thinking it was the bridge i was mostly thinking that first encounter where they're like we heard a loud screeching like he was just freaking out because they're like ah and he's like "Ah!" Ah! (laughs) so sandhill cranes are about as tall as a person so they are huge seven to eight but they are tall yeah Um, well and as tall as a person okay so if it's a tall person easily six foot yeah. Add fear on top of that. You can well, easily right. get to seven. Time. Yeah, and night, night. night. Easily get to seven, eight feet tall. Definitely. No problem. They have a seven foot wingspan, which is substantial. Yeah. I can see, again, people exaggerating seven to ten. Yeah, and easily. It has bright red color all around its eyes. Okay. Yeah. So its eyeballs themselves, but their eyeballs are very tiny. Yeah. It's really the red you would see all around their eyes. They do migrate through neighboring Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee, mm-hmm. so they are right next door. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't take much for a strong storm to just kind of yeah, blow, blow them off, off course. course. Yeah. They, okay, where it's, it's like, 
I don't know where they're getting this 100 mile an hour from, but because a sandhill crane tr- flies 25 to 35 miles per hour, <laughs> which is fast, but no, but still, miles an hour. yeah. Um, some people, though, are like, well, maybe it was deformed. You know, if it was weirdly blown off course and living in the area or was born in the area, it's just lost. Were, and yeah. there was toxic chemicals in the environment, maybe <laughs> it did something to it. Uh. Um, and even if it didn't, it's a bird that is not normally from the area. And so most people would have no, no idea clue. what they were looking yeah. at. Yeah. Which I mean, to be at fair, night. yeah, most people and have like, yeah, most people have no idea. You know, they see a red tail hawk, and how many times do we hear, uh, "I saw it all, a bald eagle." No, you didn't. You yeah, saw yeah, a red tail yeah. hawk. Oh yeah, no, it's a bald eagle. A person-sized bird, uh-huh. and then, you know, and you've it never seen it before. It. it does. Like, slender, red eyes, tall, big wingspan. <laughs> Just, Most people describe just, him as bird-looking. I just like to go with the theory that yes, it was a sandhill crane that was just blown off course a little bit, and he's just trying to live. And just all this chaos is just following, you know, yeah, that would actually make a screams every time they see him. That would actually make <laughs> a really cute, like kids Halloween book. I'm just yeah. saying, just like this poor, like Sammy, the Sandhill crane. Yeah. Just Mothman. Yeah. Just <laughs> like this, this poor bird that's just trying to live and survive. And just, yeah, just, just a black cat as you would, you know, just, uh, Poor bird. So I'm willing to believe that that's what it was in the 60s. That makes sense. I don't know what it's been everywhere else. If it, you know, I'm... Well, I mean, the lo- other locations that you said, you know, where it's been spotted, that also, you know, not... Chicago, f- for sure. Yes. It's actually, like, that's... In really their possible. range. Boston, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. But, really lost. Yeah, I don't know about the whole aliens thing or, like, the precognition or anything like that. It's too creepy for me. I wouldn't mind visiting Point Pleasant and going to the festival. I think that'd be a blast because to me, it's not the town. It's seeing that. It's like seeing the shuck. The thing. If I just saw Mothman, I would die. But uh, yeah. So that's Mothman. If you Mm. want to know more about it, there's tons out there. There's so much. Mothman prophecies. That's what I was just thinking. I was like, I've never read, I've never actually read the book. But now I kind of want to. Me too. Yeah. Although I probably will have nightmares. Oh, I. I, Like he is connecting those dots that it is. Yeah. Of just feeding in your paranoia anyway yeah this is plausible (laughs) i'm gonna die now that the government said there are aliens yeah right (laughs) i knew it oh goodness all right well i'm not gonna sleep tonight i also like that your first thought okay uh, also katie just like as christians that if a person saw a slender humanoid person with large white wings your first thing is absolute terror not like, it, that would be my reaction, too. If I ever saw what, like, actually describes an angel, no, <laughs> right? no, no, no. Yeah, forget not. Mary in the Bible. I would have been crapping my pants the oh, second dude. something showed up. That's that, what that, that is not describing it like. Dude, yes. that, again, another idea for a book. The real story of the Bible. Like, how would people actually <laughs> react to these situations? And that would be one of them. Like, an angel appears, craps a pants, runs just, away. Just <gasps> sheer terror. Freaking yeah. Out. They'd have to calm me down enough to be able to tell me what they want. <laughs> yeah. But Slap then, across the the face just, calm yeah. down <laughs> down <laughs> uh, <But> yeah <laughs> i just like that yeah that this is like everyone was like ah a slender human with large white wings let's get the heck out of here yeah like, <laughs> run run for dear life meanwhile it's like, again okay let's just okay not a sandhill crane it is an angel just trying to warn these people you know this fallen angel who's come to earth for who, a whole year for a whole trying. year he's like yeah. trying to warn people of all these bad things that are happening Your structure is bad yeah and he's like yeah. he's standing there telling people like don't don't go and meanwhile you know they're all coming out and it just collapses they see him there so then they just attribute him being the bad luck symbol and he's you know just trying to warn people <laughs> like <laughs> but everyone just that nobody listened to right that everyone's just freaking out about oh uh, yeah that would be funny we love us for i i love us virginia so i oh I the country's it. gorgeous yeah for sure i mean there's very few places. i mean i grew up you know going well in college and the post college and stuff, hiking and everything through there, and it is gorgeous country to yeah, go if hiking. If I wasn't going to live in Maryland or Pennsylvania, it'd definitely be West Virginia, dude. There's nothing there. Yeah, 
there's not like, for me for <laughs> career. But like, I mean, if I wanted to work in like parks. Or oh anything, yeah, I for mean, sure. Yeah. Well, Wait, that's it. What's your last one? The Jersey Devil. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I don't yeah. know anything about this, but I've heard the name many times. Me, me too. Hockey team, and had no idea <laughs> that this, <laughs> like, that this was a that, that this was a thing. That this is where all of that kind of came from. Because you you hear about oh the Jersey Devil. Had, had no clue. All right, so the Jersey Devil is one of the most famous and enduring legends in, in American folklore. The legend dates back to the early 18th century when the Leeds, L-E-E-D-S, family of southern New Jersey was rumored to have given birth to a monstrous child that had wings and the head of a horse. Oh, wait. Whoa, whoa, yep. whoa. I was already starting. I was starting to freak out at the wings. The head of a what? Horse. You heard me right. A horse. Yeah. A horse's head and wings. Uh Uh-huh. If you look up the picture of this thing, it's like almost Greek mythology looking. Like a minotaur kind of thing. Kinda, yeah. Jersey devil. You keep going. Also, mm, many things. Keep going. Keep going. (laughs) Yeah, just the Jersey devil, not the New Jersey devil. Okie dokie. The mother was said to have cursed the child, which then transformed into the Jersey devil and disappeared into the wilderness. While the exact origins of the legend are unclear, like, in reality, not the actual just stories of people, (laughs) it has been suggested that it may have been inspired by local folklore and superstitions, as well as by accounts of other mythical creatures from around the world. Yeah, because this just looks like the image of Satan. Well, a Satan, but also, like, I don't know. To me, it's like a, it looks more like Greek mythology than, than some, because a lot of, a lot of the mythology that we have here are a lot of the cryptids and things from Europe. Yeah. Yeah, We brought from Europe, but a lot of the ones that we have here in the U S aren't this, like, it's not the combined creatureness as much as what this is. Like this is kind of, this is just, it literally Greek mythology. Yeah, it's very much like the goat-headed yes, Satan picture, yes. but instead of a goat, it's a horse head. Yeah. So the location of the legend is primary in the Pines Barren of southern New Jersey. The area is called Pine Barrens, which covers over one million acres of dense forest, swamp, and sandy beaches. The area has long been a center of folklore and superstition with tale of ghosts, witches, and other supernatural creatures dating back centuries. Again, creepy, dense swamp, woods... Dark it's, forest. People it, have always been scared of dark and deep forest. Yep, because it's just, it's that unknown fear. So the legend of the Jersey Devil is one of the most famous of these tales that have come out of this area and has been passed down through generations of local residents and visitors to the area. Over the years, there have been numerous firsthand accounts of seeing the Jersey Devil. One of the most famous sightings occurred in 1909 when multiple people reported seeing the creature flying over the town of Woodbury, New Jersey. I would die again. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Other sightings describe the creature as a bipedal creature with wings, hooves, and a long pointed tail. Many of these sightings occurred in the early morning hours or during periods of low light, which has led to some to suggest that the sightings may be the result of misidentification of common animals or exaggerations of natural phenomenon. I'm trying to think of what common animal makes that combination. I mean, it's a horse, but the wings part? That maybe, I'm trying to think of besides an owl, like what else could it be carrying? What else could it be? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Despite numerous sightings and reports over the years, there is no concrete evidence that the Jersey Devil exists. Skeptics argue that the sightings are simply the result of hoaxes, misidentifications, and more exaggerations such as large birds or owls that people are just like, just see it and freak out because it's so creepy. However, there are those who believe the legendary the Jersey Devil has some basis in reality. Some historians have suggested that the legends may have been inspired by the presence of wildcats or other large predators in the area. So it kind of, not so much like the horse part, but again, it like started there. And then let's say, like, they said something about, oh, I saw this really creepy creature in the forest and it could be a large predator. And then they talk to somebody else about it. And they're like, oh my God, I saw something too in that forest. And it was flying. Yeah. Next thing you yeah. know, we have a flying <laughs> creature in our hands. <laughs> because they just start, you know, tell it's the game of telephone. You know, the real life yeah. game of yeah. telephone situation here. So in addition to tales of sightings, the le- legend of the Jersey Devil 
has also inspired numerous works of art and literature over the years. The creature has appeared in everything from local folk songs, horror movies. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in the legend with, again, people are just like celebrating the Jersey Devil and we have the hockey team. And so the state has kind of like embraced the legend instead of, I mean, it's one of those things, again, I don't know. I don't know if it's just human's nature to yeah, that it's become monetize. Fun, yeah. Than like scary, but also like, hey, let's monetize this thing. Well, I was also reading a thing about how in the last 20 years we've had a cryptid renaissance, they've called it. because a cryptid renaissance? Because all so these many cryptids are, are into it. <laughs> but also all these cryptids are like, finally, it's my time to shine. Yeah. But that this seems to be a thing that happens in history when there are really bad times. And people are looking for something more out there. Like freaking aliens, but nobody is focusing on the (laughs) aliens, man. That we are absolutely ready for the Jersey Uh, Devil to be our problem and not like the failing of the economy. Yeah, right? (laughs) All these banks and everything. We want Jersey Devil. We want Bigfoot. Those are problems we can deal with. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Fun. Maybe even be our friend. Uh, Who knows? Yeah. Just holding out hope of this problem. Yeah, I really wonder what the... I feel like you could... Figure this out. Has anybody asked the Leeds family? There's got to be the Leeds family still around. Like, hey, a long time ago, anybody in your family get born really weird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe not Gen- with wings and a horse head, but like. Can we just genetically test you real quick? Just yeah, uh, give like, us some of your you guys blood. Got some weird stuff going on. There's no rumors of like a cousin that got born with like freaky shoulder blades or. Right. <laughs> So just if I thought my neighbor had given birth okay this is when this is the 1700s if I uh, thought my neighbor gave birth to a creature with wings and a horse's head yeah it was it like, was that lady has made a pact with the devil right yeah it was 1735 yeah so some more so let, let I just hurry up and pulled up some stuff like the where I got this all from so it was her 13th child which also adds on a layer yeah, yeah. of course and but also the, think of how old she was. I mean uh, legitimately, she might have had a genetic, a genetic thirteenth yeah. kid. So her name for sure. was yeah. After freaking thirteen kids, well, one's about how old she was. Yeah, then. but also one's about you know <laughs> you never just the probability of things like I, who yeah. knows. So her name was Jane Leeds. They called so, her. Right. How do we not know? How does somebody not somebody is related to this woman? I mean, uh, yeah, but There's how like else family would you prove? Stories. Oh, I'm sure, but I'm sure it's just the same thing as what's, yeah. you know, what's already oh, out no, there. Oh, no, actually, my great, 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 great grandma did give birth to the Jersey Devil. Or, no, 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 she actually gave birth to, like, so, I don't even know, something so deformed. So, she had 12 kids, and then whenever she was pregnant with this 13th child, in utero, she cursed it. Because she was just, Why? like, she was just bitter done. about, yeah. She was just <laughs> To done. be fair, if I had 12 kids... In 1735, yeah, I'd be blame the poor kid. I blame know, your husband. <laughs> right, keep it in your pants. Yeah, I would the be. Poor kid. And also, why would you wish that on yourself? Do you know what it would be like to give birth to something with a horse's head well, and wings? So it says that she was in labor on a stormy night. Also, another layer, and her friend and her friends were all around her. It was at first born as a normal child. Um, oh, okay. so it was okay. at, at first, but then it Good, slowly changed they would chuck that thing right in the fire, yeah, right? <laughs> it's, it changed into a creature with hooves, a goat's head. So some say goat, some say horse, bat wings and a forked tail or Definitely, a long pointy tail. She had, yeah, she was doing it with Satan growling. Like, if I was the neighbor, I'd have been like, it was growling and screaming. The child beat everyone with its tail before flying up the chimney and heading into the pines. Dang. In some versions of the tale, Mother Leeds was supposedly a witch. They all thought she was a witch anyway. Well, right. And the ch- and they thought that the child's father was, in fact, the devil himself. Satan. Which, again, Absolutely. to give birth to, if let's just say if it was some deformity and that they didn't know about, they'd be like, nope, nope can't do it. Yep, she's been spending too much time in the woods naked lately. Right. Like, it's... <laughs> So some people also refer to it as the Leeds Devil or the Devil of Leeds. Wow. Also, can yeah. you imagine that being your family legacy? Pretty cool, though. So some people, so some, there's some discrepancy on the name, which gives, like, their ancestry then figuring out right. hard. So some say it was Jane Leeds. Other people say it was Deborah Leeds on grounds that Deborah Leeds' husband, Jeffett, 
Jaffat Leeds named 12 children in the will he wrote during 1936, which is compatible with the legend. Deborah and Jaffet Leeds also lived in the Leeds Point section, which is now Atlantic County, New Jersey, which is thought to be the area where this all started. Wait, but you did you just say 1936? He left it in the will? Sorry, sorry, sorry. 1736 now. Oh, okay. 1730. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, and so there's there have been... Away. Yeah, the thirteenth kid flew away. Even he gave birth. He's like, "There's twelve other kids. I'm out." Like he didn't want to do it. He's just like, "I don't want to share with all those kids." So interesting enough. So there are like some other things that connected to this Leeds family that kind of gave it some prominence over. I would say other like like local folklore or just folklore in general is that there were like some involvement with New Jersey politicians. One being none other than Benjamin Franklin. And Franklin's, Office. yep, and Franklin's rival almanac publisher, Daniel Leeds, resulted in a Leeds family being described as quote unquote monsters. And it was Daniel Leeds' negative description as the Leeds devil rather than actual creature that created the legend of the New Jersey devil. So there's also Wait, like so his own family. He did it to his own family, you're saying? Like that guy. Leeds, well, the Leeds guy. It, well, they're saying that. that Benjamin Franklin didn't like this Daniel Leeds guy. And this yeah. was around this Leeds guy died in 1720. So because he didn't like this guy, his family or anything, Benjamin Franklin, prominent politician started calling the whole family monsters. And again, then that kind of maybe it piggyback off of, Dang, you know what I mean? Dirty Ben Franklin. Right. <laughs> Jeez, Ben Jeez. Franklin. So anyway, so there's tons of different like, shoot offs of the story, shoot offs of origin story. It's Yeah, there'll never be an answer for this one. No, but it is all kinds of just craziness about Benjamin Franklin, how he ties into this whole thing. So anyway, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stories out there. And this one isn't as layered as the Mothman, but it definitely has I don't know, just like a wild multi layers of origin, where it could have come from. And then again, door. It, there was other sightings. That was in the early 1700s. There was another wave of sightings in 1909, like I said, in January. Again, it was New Jersey, South New Jersey, or the New Jersey, Philadelphia area, where they saw a bunch of these, a bunch of new sightings, and so that kind of like kicked it all the legends up again. So yeah, so if you really want to kind of dive into one, I mean, that's sort of why I. I knew about this one. I didn't remember the name. Like, I knew about it for, like, the, you know, New Jersey Devils and things like that. But there was an X-Files episode on it. So that's, you know, where I knew it from. Middle School Katie, X-File, Extraordinaire. But again, there's so many different depictions and stories of this one. But yeah, if you guys really want to do a dive into just some crazy history origin stories, this one's a really interesting one to dive into. But yeah. Crazy, creepy babies, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's all we have, guys. So if you want to go ahead and reach out to us on Twitter, give us a follow there. Check out our Patreon page. Just search for us on For the Love of Nature. You can find and support us there so we can keep bringing you content week after week. Yep. Now that you know more than you wanted to know, your curiosity should be piqued, and hopefully you care just a little bit more. Talk to you next week. Bye.